down there? Roy, you're on the air. Okay, we just uh, were standing here and somebody said a state parks boat went through this uh, break uh, and I'm looking down there and I see uh, debris in the water. Kurt, can you uh, walk down here and look down there? We see some uh, 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 life jackets, those round uh, circular things you throw to people. I don't see anybody in that water. I don't know what kind of a boat that would have been uh, out there. I certainly hope there are no people out there but there's a tremendous amount of debris and somebody yelled at me over the side saying a state parks boat went through there uh, but we certainly see some debris in the water uh, that's a rather shocking thing to uh, have happen uh, right here right now so type debris yeah. uh, floating uh, as for a boat I don't see a boat you know maybe the boat went into the dam uh, gate and got hung up uh, you know it makes me wonder if there's somebody that's uh, hanging onto the back of that gate or something, or if the boat is wedged in there. And what kind of a boat? I have no idea. Uh, the boat that we saw out there this morning, what, Jeff? The two people got out of the boat, they're down there with the ambulance. Okay, let, let, let me talk to you. Jeff McCracken is right up here. He's with the Bureau of Reclamation. Jeff, what happened? Uh, I just talked to Bruce Kranz of State Parks, and he said the two folks who were in the boat did get out. Uh, the boat apparently got sucked in. They apparently held on to some buoys and were able to get themselves out of the way, but apparently they are okay, but the boat did go through. Okay. Uh, That's all we know. Do we know what happened to the boat? Remember how you felt when you heard that Folsom had failed? How could it? It looked so strong, so permanent. When engineers and scientists went over the side for a closer look, they found inch-thick steel twisted like limp spaghetti. The investigation began as samples of the failed beams were gently sliced away. And here's what those welders cut out. It's been brought here to Caltrans Scientific Lab. This is a section from the west strut, part of the gate that failed. And as you can see, this was supposed to be straight, but now look at the curvature. This lab is one of the most sophisticated in the world. It routinely tests materials used in our highways and bridges. Slices of the steel from the dam gate were machined into test samples. These chips will go for chemical analysis. And this bar was put into a machine to test the force needed to shear the metal. Caltrans engineers are also looking for any signs that corrosion might have been a factor. How does it look to you as you just take a quick look? It's, it's in good condition. You know, it's, uh, it's a standard T-section. Uh, you know, the measurements you can see from the edges, they're, fairly, they're smooth and straight. And it looks good. The 90-ton gate was cut into four huge parts. Cranes and trucks brought them to this field near the dam where scientists began another set of tests. 
Here, aerospace engineers from McClellan Air Force Base began piecing together the clues. The hardness of the metal is checked, and each weld and bolt inspected. These bolts sheared away cleanly, but this weld ripped under incredible pressure. Oh, it's very impressive, the, the amount of deformation, the, the size of the structure, and, and the fact that you have these massive I-beams that are, are, are twisted uh, out of, out of, totally out of shape. This is very impressive. Here's where the gate ripped away from one of the support arms. You're looking at one inch thick steel here. In fact, the scientists calculate this was a force of 3,260,000 pounds when this broke apart. These are the same engineers and scientists who routinely work on the weapons of war. Our mission uh, has been to examine structure uh, on aircraft that has failed and determine how it's failed, determine follow-on repairs and inspections. And uh, now we've got this, this computer uh, model and you can uh, actually go in and examine areas that have looked like they were uh, highly stressed in much more detail. And where stress is found, the electron microscope checks the structure of the metal. For instance, was there a fatal flaw? Maybe the X-ray fluorescent spectrometer will find the steel was not what it's supposed to be. Every type of steel has a standard formula. This $180,000 machine checks the sample to verify the content. And then there is what surely must be the bravest experiment. The man in the yellow hat dangling over the spillway is Dr. Noriaki Ishii from Japan. 28 years ago, a similar gate on the island of Honshu failed. Dr. Ishii has spent two decades on a theory that gates can actually vibrate themselves to death as they open and the rush of water spills underneath. By hitting this gate with a hammer and electronically tracking how the vibration spreads, we may find out what happened at Folsom. At some time during the failure process, which took maybe five seconds, maybe 20 seconds to totally do it, we don't know for sure. At some point, this happened, and happened very quickly. Already, one crack that may or may not have caused the failure has been found. This is an origin right here, and it's really tough to see, but that's what they call chevron marks, and it's uh, marks that are left on a fractured surface that show where the crack originated and how it propagated and it actually propagated out to about this point when the whole thing uh, decided to go. If this gate did vibrate, it could mean that other similar gates like those at Oroville Dam could be in jeopardy. But Dr. Ishii thinks a simple fix could solve the problem. Maybe, well, the structure of the radial arm could be reinforced by uh, putting additional diagonal members between the radial um, beings. Those repairs are already underway to the seven old gates at Folsom, but a new gate to replace the one that failed won't be designed until all the scientific studies can point conclusively to the forces that made this metal twist that surprising day last July. On special assignment, John Iander, KOVR 13 News. Down here yet? Yeah. 